Hi DJs, we're back with another DJ NTV Summer Shorts tip. I'm DJ Rachel and today I'm going to be talking about the point of interest editor in Virtual DJ 8. So if you just started learning how to mix or maybe you just got a controller, be sure to pay attention because this tip is going to be very helpful for you. Now, there is no shortcut here, and I wish I had one, but the fact of the matter is, is any DJ who mixes well has spent hours painstakingly going through their database and setting these points of interest, such as hot cues and loops, within their tracks so that when they're mixing live, the music that they're using is properly formatted with these points of interest so that they can be more creative accurate and smooth with their mixes and transitions. Now I know DJs make this look easy, but this is because they're doing the work beforehand and they're sitting down in front of their music, really going over the intricacies and nuances of the track and really deciding where they want to set these points of interest based upon their mixing style, maybe the type of gig that they're anticipating performing at, or if there's a certain section of the track that they really want to highlight or remix, this is where these points of interest come into play. Now, seamless mixes don't just happen haphazardly. There is strategic planning on where these go. Now, this is why you need to use the point of interest editor before your event. This isn't something you're going to want to do during your event. It takes time. It takes patience. It takes a lot of focus really looking at the track on where to strategically place these. So again today I want to touch briefly on the point of interest editor, how to access it, and there are many different types of points of interest that you can set within the editor, but today I only want to focus on two. I want to discuss hot cues and marker points and how to use them and why they're useful. So let's dive right in and look at how we use the point of interest editor in Virtual DJ 8, hot cues and marker points. As always, I'm going to be dealing with the default Virtual DJ 8 skin. Now there are two ways we can access the point of interest editor. If I come down here in this pad section and click on this button right here, it's going to bring up a menu and it says edit cues and points of interest. If I click on that, it's going to bring up the point of interest editor right here. Now my preferred way is actually either to come over to deck A or deck B and simply right click on the waveform and it pulls up the point of interest editor. And again, this works for both decks. Now Virtual DJ 8 actually does something pretty cool here. Every MP3 is automatically set with cue points, but they're not visible unless you manually show them. Now these are indicated by these light purple triangles right here. So if I click show all and deactivate it, they disappear. And if I click show all, they come back. Now these purple triangles are known as pre-marked cue points for the auto mix. Now as you all know, the auto mix feature in Virtual DJ 8 automatically blends tracks and these purple points that you see here are where the software has decided to make these blends when auto mix is activated. Now the reason why you don't see these on the waveform on your main screen here is because Virtual DJ was actually smart enough to give you the option to make things invisible. So this means they're there and functioning and active, but when you come out to your main waveform right here in either one of your decks, you're not going to see these points of interest. And this prevents everything from getting really cluttered and jumbled and confusing with points of interest that you're not going to use or don't really care about. It's important to really only put in points of interest that you know you're going to use. Otherwise things can get really confusing and really cluttered. So too many is no good. So have Having that invisible feature was really smart in my opinion. So now I want to talk about hot cues and these are points that the DJ has strategically placed within the track that will advance or skip to that exact point where you had set that hot cue. And hot cues are awesome because they're very punchy and they're very exact. There's no delay, there's no skipping, there's no pausing. Wherever you set that hot cue, that is exactly where the software will jump that track to. So let's take a listen at what I mean. So here's hot cue number one. Hot cue number two. Hot cue number three. And now if I hit these rapidly, you're gonna notice that there is 
no delay. They're very punchy and very responsive. And that's exactly what you want when you're mixing live. We need these to be very crisp and punchy. So hot cues can be um, placed a couple different ways. Now, as you see, I already had some place so I could show you how they work, but setting a cue point is or a hot cue is really easy. All you simply do is decide a point of the track where you'd like to put it. Now, I typically like to put one at the beginning, one when the vocals drop in, maybe one where there's a build. Then let's just say I'm gonna put one right here where um, the beat drop is. And I can kind of tell where that is based upon the waveform and the, the colors that I see. So I can simply put a hot cue by clicking that button and then maybe I'll put another one here as the beat exits on the track and I'll make that number five. Now let's just say I made a mistake and I was off on my cue point and I want to delete it. So let's just say I put it here so now when I hit it it has that extra sound involved and I don't want that there. So to simply get rid of this cue point, all I have to do is right click and it disappears, come over to the waveform, adjust it, and reapply it by left clicking. And now it's gonna be exactly where I wanted it. So it's really important when you're setting these that you're being accurate with their placement. Otherwise, they're gonna sound off or you might um, have an extra beat involved and it's not going to hit and be as crisp and exact as you'd want it. But if you make a mistake, you could see how easy it is to remove. Now you can also do this in the point of interest editor. You can simply um, you know, pick a point in the track where you'd want it, come here and hit it, you can also drag these uh, points with your mouse and really put it wherever you feel like. And again, if you made a mistake, just simply click it, hit the garbage can. It's going to ask, yes, if you want to delete it, and then it's gone. So you have a couple ways to set hot cues in here. Now, another neat thing that I like what Virtual DJ does, it allows you to name these hot cues so that you don't get confused in terms of where they are or what their function is. So again, if I click on the number one hot cue and set it, and then open up my editor, I can now name this cue something. Rather than just leaving it as your standard Q1, I can put intro. So now I know that this is where the track is gonna start. Another neat feature is I can actually assign it a color. Typically, I like to make all my hot cues the same color so that I visually know what I'm seeing as the track progresses. So I typically like to make my first intro hot cue green. So green, go, start, that's just mentally how it works for me. So now if I close this, not only will it show up green right here, but if I go to my Denon MCX8000 and I go to my pad, my first hot cue button on my pad is now green. So now I come to cue number two. Again, right click. Instead of calling it cue two, I can now label it as vocal in. So now I know that this is where the vocals come in. And maybe I want to assign this pink or magenta. So I close it and now it's going to show up magenta right here. Now I go to my hot cue three. I know that this is where um, the build is. So maybe I want to put build and I'll mark that as blue. Close it and now it's gonna show up as blue. Now this is where the drop is, so instead of naming this Q4, I'm simply just gonna delete it and maybe put beat drop. So now I know that's where the beat drop comes in. And so on and so forth. So you can actually name your hot cues so that you know, you know, what they are and what position you are in the track. So I thought that was a really great feature as well. So now I wanna talk about how hot cues can actually make for a better mix. So as you can see, I have two tracks loaded up. I got one in deck A and one in deck B. So I'm going to play um, some of the end of track A and casually mix in the song in deck B and you're gonna hear that it's not really that um, exciting or punchy of a mix. Now I 
pretty much just have two beats playing on top of one another, and there's really nothing terribly exciting going on. Now they're synced up and they sound good, but again, I feel like something is missing there. It's kind of losing its energy because there's nothing really going on but a drum beat. Okay, and then the vocals come in. So I feel that through setting a better hot cue, I can make that a more exciting and punchier of a mix. So if we look over here at deck B, you'll notice that I have a hot cue set at the beginning of the track, but also one that is set at um, 15 seconds in as indicated right there. So it's taking away some of that monotonous drum beat. So now if I start this track at 15 seconds in at the last 36 seconds of this track, this vocal part, which is indicated by this blue band here in the waveform, is going to start earlier in the track, halfway here, versus at the end. So I'm going to have, you know, some more excitement within that mix than just having, you know, a 30 second count of just drum beats. So now I'm going to show you the difference on how strategically using a hot cue more advanced in the track can make for a better sounding mix. So you're going to see that the vocals are going to come in a lot sooner and give the mix a little bit more excitement. So I think you can hear the difference on how using strategically placed cue points can, again, can kind of enhance your mixes and make sure that you're hitting the best part of the tracks as quickly as possible. The last thing that I want to cover is these marker points. Now sometimes you want to have a visual cue on where something is coming up in a track. Again, either there's where a drop is or maybe there's um, some type of sound effect or the beat changes or there's an extra synth sound that is added, but you don't want to waste a hot cue button on it. So you can simply go to the editor, um, click on, uh, let's see here, new, and I'm going to add a new cue, and this time I'm simply just going to um, mark this as a marker only. So now if I, let's just say I put it here, marker only, so now this is known as Q6, let me rename it just so we can see it better as marker only. So now if I close it, you'll see that there isn't a six hot cue here and it might be a little hard to see here, but if you look up at the top where it says marker only, so it has put a, a marker in that track of something that I wanted to highlight or maybe remember, all right, this is where the beat is gonna come in, but I didn't wanna waste a hot cue button on it. And that's how you would use um, markers within the point of interest editor. Again, this can get really involved. I plan on doing a few more videos with this, but today I just wanted to touch on hot cues, how to set them, how to delete them, maybe where you wanna put them, how to label them, how to color code them, and how they can enhance your mixes and make it a little bit more snappier and punchier by advancing the track a little bit to get to the point that really gives the best feel and energy. So again, thank you so much for watching this episode of Summer Shorts on DJN TV. If you have any other tips on points of interest editor, you know, feel free to leave them in the comments. We appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.